Hi, I'm Dr. Alison Griffith, Associate Professor of Electronic and Communication Engineering. I'm currently in the laboratory where we carry out our practical sessions for our courses. As you can see around me, there are many computers and we have engineering standard software that is used throughout the industry, such as MATLAB. We use it for power systems, for communication engineering, for control, robotics control engineering and we can do things in a controlled environment that we can't necessarily use with some equipment. We can also then integrate this with hardware. So from an entry level perspective, we teach embedded systems. So we use the Arduino Uno that some of you may already have heard of. So this is an embedded system where we write a file that is uploaded to the board and it monitors these pins on the outside and it can monitor for inputs from sensors and we have um, some example sensors here which this is known as a shield and it's placed on the top so as it's an entry level um, subject we don't worry about the electronics um, and these are already pre-made and we can connect these to certain pins, press a button, write a program, and then produce an output. Here I've got an LED. We've got lots of other outputs we can use to display, say, the temperature. We've got te other, other sorts of sensors. We've got light sensors, temperature sensors. So this is our entry level embedded systems. We can also simulate this on the internet as well, so you can try out your systems before starting. Now, now we move on to something more robotic. So we would start off with the embedded system. So then you're thinking about how you're gonna control things. How are we gonna control a motor, for instance? Because if you have a robot or a control system, then it, you need to control what voltage is the, the motor needs to be provided with, then that will give a different speed of um, turning of the motor. So we use this kit, it's quite heavy, um, which we have two DC motors on here, and we then, we, we can connect voltages and we've got integrated circuits here, and we can program this to do various different things based on control systems. We also have um, PID controller si systems, so you can learn about DC motor control and PID also. So once we move on from the basic motor control on a static system, then you may want to move on to using a robot of some sort. We have various robots in different guises throughout the lab. Uh, this is an example of a National Instruments Compact Rio. Compact Rio are not only used for robotics, they can be used for control systems in, in factories. So these, as you can see, this one has four wheels, so it can move forwards and backwards and we can control the robot. But this one is actually has its own IP address so it's connected to the internet. We also have line following robots. And as I said, there's other guises of robots here. So here's a typical workstation um, in the lab where we've got the computer and we have a function generator. So we can generate any type of function, um, square, sine wave, uh, triangular wave. Then we have a dual DC power supply and then we have an oscilloscope. Now, the oscilloscope shows us whatever the signal is in the time domain. And for the frequency domain, what we usually use is a compact Rio or another device, such as a digital signal processor. And then we fire up LabVIEW and then we'll see a spectrum analyzer on the screen. We also have short courses and long courses on the electronics that go into a car. The embedded system over there, we do a very simplistic version of a car, an embedded system. Here we, we teach courses about the wiring of the whole car and the chassis 
and also the electronics. This part of the lab is, is um, the power electronics lab. Now, we, here we have a scale version of the three-phase supply. So we can build different circuits and in this case we have a three-phase source with a controlled rectifier with a load. So we can, we, we can wire this circuit and we can take the measurements with the voltmeter and the ammeters given there and we can also induce some faults in these circuits so we simulate what happens when a fault occurs and we can take the measurements and carry out those kind of measurements. We can, we, we can simulate load balancing and load shedding. So what happens when we add capacitor banks into the um, system. So now I'm going to hand you over to my colleague Dr. Anna Samjad who will talk about embedded systems in more detail and telecommunication lab.